Hey everyone, and welcome to this new video. In this video, I would like to introduce you to a dashboard for Home Assistant. More details after the intro. A lot of savings. As Home Assistant already has a dashboard that can even automatically add new sensors, if desired. Overall, it's super practical, and for me, it's a decisive argument for Home Assistant. However, this automatic dashboard also has a small drawback. After some time, when you have quite a few things in your smart home, it can become quite, quite cluttered. That's why you can build your own dashboard. However, this also means investing a lot of time and effort into creating your own dashboard. Personally, I am a fan of making dashboards somewhat automatically, and that's exactly where the so-called Dwayne's dashboard comes into play. The advantage is that you just need to install it, and you automatically have a nice, clear dashboard that is especially stylish and tidy for mobile devices, such as a tablet on the wall or the phone you take with you. For the installation, you will first need the Home Assistant Community Store. I will link how you can install it up here. I actually made a video about that before. We can now simply go to the Home Assistant Community Store, click on Integrations, and then just search for Dwayne's Dashboard. And here we have it already. You can install it at the bottom right. Normally there is a small button there, but I don't have it now because I have already installed it. After the installation, restart Home Assistant for safety. You can do this by going to Settings, then System, and then pressing the Restart button at the top. After Home Assistant has restarted, we now need to add an integration. To do this, go to Devices and Services, add an integration, and again, search for Dwayne's Dashboard. Click on it once, and then it should be added. From now on, you will also see the Trains Dashboard listed at the top in the sidebar. However, it should not work yet when you press it because you still need to clear your browser's cache. If you're not sure how to do that, you could simply open the selection menu here and open a new private window. This way, you will definitely have cleared the cache. So, here we already have the overview. We can make a few settings here, such as disabling the clock, turning off a welcome message, activating the V layout, or selecting a weather or alarm entity. Basically, we have the welcome message displayed at the top, the weather up here, the time here, and an overview that adjusts dynamically. On one hand, we see people displayed here. So for example, me, where I am currently located and then an overview of devices that are currently turned on. With a click, these lights can now also be turned off. I'm not going to do that right now because then the 2001 studio lights would go out. Below, we then see all the areas that are set up with information such as lights that are turned on. The current temperature and humidity, as well as the heating settings. All this information has now been added automatically and can also be displayed in more detail with a click as you can see here on the right side. We now have a list of lamps, heating thermostats, and so on. Of course, also battery statuses, basically everything that your devices provide. Personally, I would enable the grouping by entities at the top, as this makes everything a bit more organized and, in my opinion, looks a bit clearer. Additionally, we can also edit everything and add individual items to the rooms here if the view is not sufficient for us. Additionally, you can move the individual sensors here and of course also edit the individual entities here. Exclude. As you can see, a lot of possibilities. We can also take a look at the individual device groups here, for example. All the lights that we have here or our own dashboards as well. Definitely creating pages. Personally, I'm not a big fan of that. The automatic view is enough for me. Otherwise, I could just build a dashboard myself. I find it quite acceptable for a desktop site but not particularly exciting. It only gets really exciting when we take a look at the mobile view, as this is where it starts to become particularly interesting. Since the devices are sorted by areas, it appears incredibly organized at first glance. You have direct access to the devices that are turned on, so when leaving the apartment, you can quickly turn off all the lights and switches. You can also possibly deactivate the climate control, and you can keep an eye on the individual room, so you can adjust the temperature of the room if it is not correct. Even more interesting, of course, is clicking on the room and then adjusting the individual devices in this beautiful overview. With a click, this lamp opens up here and I could not only turn it on, but also change the color, or rather, adjust light temperature. All in all, I must say that this is truly a very, very successful smart home overview that, as you have seen, is very, very easy to implement. I have had it installed for about two weeks now, and I must say that a lot has happened in that time there are now many, many more settings than there were two weeks ago. Accordingly, I would say that this is definitely something you can install to give it a try. I can imagine that a lot will happen with this dashboard in the meantime. And with that, I would say that's it for this video. 
If you liked it, feel free to show it with a rating and then I would say we'll see each other again next week for a new video. Take care, have a good one and goodbye.